Hello, it's Hank. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the Journey to the Microcosmos Microscope, which is right here. We're having a Kickstarter for it right now. And, uh, and so it will arrive, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the parts of it that you will need to know about when you are first taking it out of the box. This will be the first in a series of instructional videos. This one, we're just going to put the microscope together and get it operational and, and walk you through some of the... Uh, some of the knobs and twisty things that you're going to need to know about. Uh, you will take it out of the box and it will not be completely assembled. There will be several pieces that you can put on. And the number one, uh, you're going to take off this uh, cap here. There's a little twisty thing that will let you uh, twist and untwist the tightness on that cap. This cap exists to keep dust off of this thing here. So in general, I shouldn't even be talking right now because this is off and I'm spitting everywhere because that's as we've learned this year, when you're talking, you're spitting. In general, anywhere there's glass, especially if it's facing upward, you want it covered because dust can settle on it and that's gonna, you know, be visible maybe sometimes or Im impede light, etc. So this is on there uh, when you take it out of the box. You're gonna wanna take that off and then you're gonna take this, which is your little head. I don't know what it's called. Just for clarity, I've never used a microscope before, which is kind of, I mean, I have, but I've never owned a microscope before, which is uh, kind of by design because I wanted a person who hadn't, wasn't good at this to be able to use it and also know what kind of mistakes people would make. So, you are now going to sink this onto here, uh, the orientation doesn't matter, and then tighten it on up. One of the great things about this, uh, the orientation not mattering, is if you loosen it a little bit, wait, no, it's not actually in there. Whoa, I did it. Okay, there we go. Now it's in. You can move it from side to side and that doesn't affect it, which is neat. This can be tightened really tight so it doesn't move very much or it can be loosened a little bit, uh, but in general you want it so that it doesn't fall off if you turn it upside down. But on that note, do not put the eyepieces in first because they do not secure in there. They slide in and they just sit there. Uh, so if you turn your microscope upside down while those are in there, they are going to fall out. Don't do that. These are 10x eyepieces, which means that all of these objectives are multiplied by 10. So you got multiplication here, multiplication here, and you can start out with uh, 4x. So this is the 4x objective with 10x eyepieces, and that means that this is now 40 times magnification, which initially I was like, I'm gonna want the most magnification possible. Turns out uh, there is a use for all of those magnifications, um, and it is enjoyable to look at things in 40x, it's enjoyable to look at it in 600x. Uh, and obviously if you want to find stuff to look at, it's very useful to have a more zoomed out view, but also it's very pretty. This is very pretty, and there are lots of things that are pretty big. Turns out, this is probably fairly uh, simple stuff, but you can move this around so that you start with your 40x magnification, you go to your 100, uh, then you go to 400, and then on here we've also got 1,000. This is what the microscope comes with. If you have the plan objectives, those are right here. First, the 1,000 the times magnification is oil immersion, so you need some microscope oil, which will come with your kit, and you'll drip that onto the slide, and then slide the objective into that oil, and the oil actually becomes a part of the lens, which without that you can't uh, use the thousand times magnification. So if you got the plan objectives, that's what these are. To switch them out, you literally just switch them out. These just twist right out. Um, boop. So the cap comes off, which is lovely. And then this comes off of the cap. Now leave it in there for now. And then this, you twist. Do, 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 do. Hold on to it. It's going to come out anytime now. Eh, there it is. And then you switch this. Put that in there, put this in there, and that's that's how you switch these out. Um, it's a bit fiddly, I've noticed, uh, to get it to grip, but eventually it does. One of them, I was switching it out and it was so hard to twist with my fingers. And look, I'm not the strongest guy in the world. I had to use a pair of pliers. Um, I was careful, but I just had to have something to grip it with that wasn't my fingers. The microscope, whether you got the planar objectives or not, will come with a chromatic objectives on it. And I'm gonna switch this back now because I actually want the 4X objective on there. You know, this is how you want to store these, obviously, um, which is nice that that's why these, it comes with these so that you can have a place to store your other lenses when you're switching them out. Now this microscope, uh, you have to plug it in. So that it comes with the power cord, plug it in, plug it into the wall, and it's ready to go. Now, uh, there's a little switch on the back. If it doesn't turn on, it's because the little dimmer switch on the side is not turned up, and then you see the light coming out there. Uh, so let's now go on a guide of the different parts of the microscope. So, got your dimmer switch, that, if you want more light or less light, it isn't always best to have more light. 
I also thought this. It would be always better to have more light. Turns out it's not. So we're starting at the very bottom. I guess we'll work our way up. This is the little lens where the light comes through. It's dusty right now, but it doesn't matter because this is just light. It's not actually being imaged at all. On the lowest part is our filter tray. So right now I actually have a blue light filter in there, which I didn't realize I, I had, but I do. If you got one of our filter sets, these will just drop in there. You can actually, uh, some of our filters you can stack also because they're not very thick. So you can fit multiple filters in there. Just to use a slide back in once you got the filter on there. The next thing up on this is the aperture. So this changes the amount of light coming through. You can see that there. And if you want uh, it to be brighter, obviously more open. If you want more detail, you go more closed. And so if you want a super detailed image, but it's gonna be a little bit darker, uh, there's where you go. I've obviously been using this a lot and haven't had it covered as much as I should, so it's dusty. Um, so I'm already a bad microscope care person, but honestly, um, it's a bit of a messy activity. Like there's, there's like muck and there's little, there's decomposing vegetation. And then you've got this little knob, which moves the light source up and down. And this is called, I think the condenser. And so this moves the condenser up and down. It's sort of like a sweet spot I found. Like, when I'm looking at an image, I move this up and down and I'm like, oh, looks good right there. And I don't know why. Over here, we've got your focus knob. This is on both sides, but you're gonna wanna use the left-hand side mostly because the right-hand side, there is, this is where how you control where the slide is gonna be. Just move back and forth and up and down. Your stage uh, happens only on the right-hand side, so your left hand is gonna be over here on the focus knob. This is for fine, fine focus. This is for gross focus. And then one thing to be careful of, Nobody warned me about this. So focusing moves the stage up and down. You can actually move it up into the lens. Just know that it might happen. Uh, and when it happens, uh, you will notice immediately because the sample will move um, because it will get squished a little bit. So stuff will be moving around and it won't be alive. Like unliving stuff will be moving around. And that's how you know that you've just hit your slide. And if you keep going, you might break the slide. I think you have to be not paying very much attention for that to happen, but it could certainly happen. As we continue to move up, now we've got our stage. So this is the stage where we put our slide. I've got some dried out samples here. James will be mad at me to see that my, I let my samples dry out, which means that I killed a bunch of microbes. Um, but I'm just learning. So yeah, you pull this out, put the slide in, put this in, and then it's locked in place, uh, you know, pinched here and pinched here. And then when you do your little these knobs, it will move around. And this takes a while to get the feel of, and you'll you'll be thinking you're going backwards a lot. You, you'll think you're gonna go up and you're gonna go down. You get used to it. You get used to it pretty fast, I've actually found. Though, what you will know is that the way that James can chase a microbe is a, a feat of skill, uh, talent, and skill that has been developed over many years. Inside of this thing, there's a prism that bends the light, so it goes up here and then gets bent into the eyepiece. And then here's where your eyepieces are. Uh, these move independently of each other. They're binocular, and so you want them to match the way that you are, like the, the distance apart your eyes are, which different people are different. So if you're really close together or you're a little kid, um, and then if you have eyes that are super far apart. A, a tip that I didn't know going into this uh, is that you don't have to wear your eyeglasses. If you wear glasses, um, everything is in focus, whether or not you're wearing glasses. For me, anyway. I'm super blind. I can no longer see myself in the camera viewfinder. Uh, but if I look in here, everything, like once I focused on it, everything is in focus. Hello, dead diatoms. My bad. There's also little marks on here. So you can kind of get an idea of where your best setting is, especially if you're gonna be sharing this microscope. Mine is like right here. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but it's like right here. It's like with the tops a little bit above the 75, and I don't actually know what any of these numbers stand for. Another very cool thing about having a binocular microscope that you just don't get when you're watching it on YouTube is it's actually binocular, which means not just like I don't have to squint one eye, but also it's like 3D. So I can feel the depth of the slide, like where the top of the slide is and where the bottom, and like, you know, usually that distance like, if I'm looking at it here, it, like, doesn't exist. But when you magnify it, it's actually quite deep. And so, you know, when you've got a little bit of vegetation, it suddenly actually starts to look like a little forest uh, happening on your slide. And you can feel the depth of it. You can feel when the microbes are moving up and down in the, the water column that is between the slide and the slide cover. So that is your tour of the microscope. There are a lot, there's lots more to cover. There's uh, gonna be a video about how to prepare a slide. There's gonna be a video about how to use this, the little device that connects your phone to your microscope so that you could take good video and how best to use that. 
Um, and then maybe we'll do a sample collection video as well, because um, my first attempt at sample collection didn't go very well, because I didn't really know what to look for. And my second attempt went fantastically, because I just found the best little rotten thing. Just a... you want some vegetation that just has a lot of su surface area and does not look good. Like it's... Like, not all the way sludge, but like, on its way to becoming sludge is where you need. So I think that's everything you need to know, except that when you're done with your, when you're done uh, with your session with your microscope, turn it off and cover it with your dust cover, which I haven't been doing enough, obviously, in the footage you just saw, so that your eyepieces don't get dust in them, because they're always facing a little bit up, um, and also just in general, so there's not dust around. So that's uh, our initial tour of the Journey to the Microcosmos microscope. Thank you for your interest, and if you are already a backer, thank you so much. I can't wait to get these things in your hand and start seeing what you discover!